Let me show you the opportunity you have to use your data collector to as bill all these points that have been laid out out here on the ground by a surveyor for the guy that's going to dig the basement for this first house out here. The operator for this company does not have GPS on it, so it's not a model that's loaded. But you're in a situation where you're afraid that all these points are going to get lost. No one gave me a design for it or a CSV file for the points. I just want to as build what's here so I can put it back. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the main menu on this project, go to project setup, go change project, and we're going to create a new work order. We'll call this uh, building pad one. We're going to hit finish. And if you want to see the design in the background still, you can. We'll turn on the original SR multifamily one and two for this project on here, just so we can see it as we go. But we're as building the existing conditions out here. While that's loading, you can see that I've got a stake here that actually says that's a 10 foot to the offset or 10 foot offset to the building corner. So we can record those just as a reference, as a point, and then we can do line strings for the strings that are out there. If the model turns out to be too much, you can turn it off, but you can see there's a reference right here. Just something to kind of watch as you go, right? This line across here is my cross section is from the original design. We don't have to have that on. We can go in here and just turn on 3D slicer view on that one. But right here, I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna shoot this as a point and then we'll do a couple line strings. So on the main screen, roller stuck in the mud under the guy standing there, which is your measure type. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just do a quick, this one is a 10 foot offset is my point. I'm gonna change it from surface to feature and I'm gonna turn this to no so that I, on the show every time. I'm going to hit accept. I'm going to set on it. I've got tilt compensating, so I'm not going to level up too close. And I'm going to just record it. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to look at the next ones, see what they say. This one is also a 10-foot offset. These you can just record so you have the existing shots in case they get wiped out from the dig or concrete guys or whatever it may be. This one's also a 10-foot offset. I'm just recording these as singles. Also a 10 foot offset. We'll grab one more and then we'll shoot some line strings in. The reason for the line strings uh, when I do this is then it will actually outline it. You can see that the guy that shot these in actually gave us the uh, line strings on them. Not line strings, sorry. He actually outlined it for the guy that's gonna dig. But you can imagine as soon as you dig those out, they're completely gone. So it's a guessing game. It's setting batter boards, it's shooting paint lines. But at this point, I can shoot them by myself with the data collector. So let's start right over here. And I'm gonna use the strings that he already shot. So we're gonna go ahead and, let me tip the camera down here. You can see down. So I'm gonna change my mode, roller stuck in the mud. This time I'm gonna go into measure mode, I'm gonna to go to line string, and we'll just call this the uh, perimeter. Well, no, don't need it to be a brake line, I'm not making a surface off of it, so I'm gonna just do it as a line string, and I'm gonna say accept. Now these points where he has these uh, stakes, there's no pins in the ground, they're just a, a location, right? So that's the beauty of uh, tilt compensating, is I can tip it on an angle. I can shoot it. You can also look and see how close it is to what the actual design is. Just a hair off. So I'm gonna follow his line string and I'm gonna just keep shooting. And you can see as I go, it makes a, a red line string as we go. It also neat lines in between all of them. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot the perimeter and just outline them. If you don't have tilt compensating, make sure you level up as close as you can. But we're just gonna follow his line. So that one's lower obviously, and this one's higher on the bank, not a big deal. I'm not as worried about the elevation as I'm worried about just finding the position of these later on. This is most likely where the garage door is gonna go in and come back out for the footings, but for the dig purposes, I'm just getting the perimeter.
So those of you digging basements, this is extremely handy if you don't have machine control. You can either get these shots in a CSV file from the engineer and plug it in, or you can just as built what's out here. So on and so forth. We're not going to shoot them all. In this video, I just wanted to be able to show you how it compares to design. So if that's all I want to shoot at that point, I'm just going to go ahead and hit my menu button, and I'm going to hit uh, measure to cancel out. And to get rid of the design in the background now, just to show you what it looks like without that, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hit no design needed. Still the same work order. And then it'll make more sense with what you see right here on the screen. So you can see I've outlined it. I've got the actual individual points. I've got the points around the outside here. If you want, you can turn on point name. A little bit of a cluster sometimes, but at least you can reference what they are. If you didn't turn on point name and you needed to know what a single point was, you can just touch and hold on it. So if I got a point right here, I can touch and hold. Go to point info. And I've got 10 foot offset on there. So at this point, now I've got an outline of at least what I just did. So if I lost that line, I can go ahead and touch on it. And I can go in here and I can stake the line. So now I can go ahead and reference where it's at again. So let's say right here it was dug out. I can come up here. I didn't know exactly where it was at. I can find where I'm at. And I can be staking that line. And I can be what's called random. I'll do more videos on proper staking setups, but on random, now there's a little green tagging line between where I'm at and that line, and it also tells me how far away I'm on this inward. So as I lean in, you can see that number is growing and falling whatever way I go, right? So that's, that's how you basically find your way back to that line. So you can see as I bounce around, I'm zoomed in really far, but as soon as I get back on that line, I hit zero, you can see I'm right on that line. So this is just a way to use Trimble SiteWorks to actually as build existing conditions, existing points, to be able to relay them back out, control your own destiny. If all these points got wiped out out here, you would not have to wait for some a survey firm to come lay it back out. You don't have to wait a week or two days or three days. You can just relay it back out yourself. So thank you for watching this video from Site Tech Intermountain on Trimble SiteWorks laying out or shooting existing conditions and relaying them back out.